Hello everyone, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. So she's finally here, she's finally up for grabs, but now the biggest question is whether or not Yaimiko is good or not. Is she a top tier meta character, or is she a glorified official? I have not slept since 2.5's launch, and it's mainly because I really wanted to get this video out because I know that so many people want Yaimiko, but they want more information on whether or not she's good before they decide to use all of their hard earned primos. So I'm gonna try to help you out with that decision, or help you get the most out of her if you've already pulled. I have been playing her non-stop since launch, I've leveled up her and her signature weapon up to level 90, and her talents up to 666, so that I could test her out and tell you guys what I think of her. So if you do end up finding this video helpful at all, please feel free to leave me a like and comment down below, it does help me boost into the YouTube algorithm and I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want to see more Genshin Impact content from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. But with all that out of the way, let's talk about Yaimiko. So like always, we're going to go over my build first, and then we'll go over her kit and playstyle, and then towards the end of the video we'll try to come up with a definitive answer of whether or not she's good, or at the very least whether or not she's worth pulling for. So my Yae is currently level 90 out of 90, with 1883 attack, 84 elemental mastery, 90.7% crit rate, 180.7% crit damage, 120 energy recharge which is actually really low guys, you definitely want a lot more than this, but I'm able to get by because of my other electro support units, and she has 46.6% electro bonus bonus damage. As for her weapon, I am using her signature weapon at R1, Kagura's Verity, which has a base attack of 608 at level 90, and gives you a whopping 66.2% crit damage. On top of this, every time you use a skill up to 3 times, it increases your elemental skill damage by 12% giving you up to an extra 36% elemental skill damage. Also, when you have all three stacks up, you also get an extra 12% elemental bonus damage, so it's no wonder why this is her signature weapon. However, if you don't have Kagura's Verity, and you want a 4-star weapon with a crit rate or crit damage substat, you can always use the Wind Sith, the Battle Pass weapon the Solar Pearl, or the Black Cliff Agate from the Masterless Star Glitter Shop. And for her artifact set, I'm using the full 4-piece of the Emblem of Severed Fate, mainly because she has a 90 cost burst and anything to help with that is greatly appreciated. Plus, the boost to her burst damage is also nice. My Yaimiko is currently C0 and she will be the entire video, and as I mentioned earlier, her talents are 666. Okay, and now that we've gone over her build, let's get into what we know about Yaimiko. Yae is a 5-star Catalyst user that specializes in dealing off-field and burst electro damage. In fact, just like I thought in my pre-release analysis of Yae, it did turn out that the grand majority of her value comes from her skill and her burst. And while her normal attacks are beautiful, and can help you deal damage if you're in a pinch, overall I get the feeling that the grand majority of players that pick up Yaimiko are probably just not going to use her normal attacks at all. This is because they actually have pretty low scaling and the damage that you get from your skill and burst are just so much more valuable that you're simply going to get much more mileage just focusing on her skill and her burst. In fact, unless you're planning on running her as an electro driver, I would honestly just leave her normal and charge attacks at talent level 1 until you've gotten both of her skill and her burst up to talent level 6, or even talent level 8. But of course you'll have to fight the weekly boss first in order to do so. I also want to point out that many players, including myself, are actually finding her normal and charge attacks to be fairly clunky, so honestly you're not missing out on too much. So I think it's better to allocate your resources to your skill and burst, and then circle back to her normal and charge attacks whenever you get the chance. So what makes her elemental skill and her elemental burst so special? Well I think it all comes down to consistency and high damage. Her elemental skill places up to 3 electro turrets that targets enemies within their AoE. However, you never really want just one turret out at a time, and instead you're going to want all three. This is because when you have all three on the field and they're all connected, it increases the total damage that they're able to output. At C0 you can get up to level 3 damage, but this can increase up to level 4 with her second constellation. However, even though there are 4 levels of damage total, Total, only 3 turrets can ever exist at the same time. So if you already have 3 out on the field and you cast her skill another time, it'll delete the first turret that you put out and replace it with a new one. Now one thing about her skill that not many people are talking about that's actually pretty important is the fact that you want to line them up in a triangle, and you also want to be careful not to space them out too much. If they are too far away from each other, they won't level each other up, and if you place them in a line, the two turrets on the outside are going to reach level 2, but only the one in the center will reach level 3. So to make sure that her skills are all level 3, make sure that they're able to form some type of triangle, and that they're moderately spaced out. And I gotta say, even only at talent level 6, her elemental skill does deal a decent amount of damage. While it's
it's not the craziest skill in all of Genshin Impact, it offers very consistent damage, and is actually very flexible since it only has a cooldown of 4 seconds, allowing you to replace your turrets wherever you might need them, and essentially resetting their duration. And besides damage, it also does help batter your team, since they also periodically make energy particles. Oh, and I know a lot of people are probably interested about this. You know how her skill is supposed to scale off of Elemental Mastery? This has caused many players to wonder whether or not they should build her with an Elemental Mastery build, or replace her timepiece with an Elemental Mastery timepiece, and I just want to quickly say that while you technically can, I would honestly advise against it because then her normal and charge attacks as well as her burst would then not deal as much damage. Her entire kit scales off of attack, but only her elemental skill gets a boost from her elemental mastery, so I think it's much safer just to go with an attack timepiece, and then try to get as many EM substats as possible. Okay, so now what about her burst? Guys, I gotta say, Yaimiko's burst is probably the most satisfying thing about her entire kit. Not only does it have a beautiful animation, but it actually packs quite a punch. This is because the damage scaling is actually pretty high, and that you can trigger up to 4 instances of burst damage at a time. Just keep in mind that the initial burst strike is a little bit weaker, and the subsequent lightning bolts are actually the bulk of your damage. Anytime you use your burst, any remaining turrets on the field are going to turn into extra lightning strikes, so it's always important to make sure that you have 3 out on the field before using your burst. And luckily, anytime that you do use her elemental burst, it also resets your skill cooldown allowing you to immediately set down 3 more elemental skills. Honestly, the synergy between her elemental skill and her elemental burst is definitely my biggest highlight about Yaimiko. If you can manage to funnel enough energy into her, this fast-paced gameplay style is actually really fun and enjoyable. Okay, and fun is all well and good, but how does she actually function when in a team? One thing that I immediately realized is that you're going to always, always, always want at least one other electro unit on your team. This is mainly because if you don't have her constellation 1, which refunds you 8 energy every time her skill is destroyed by her burst, then unless you have over 180 to 200 energy recharge, you're definitely going to struggle to get her burst back up. Unfortunately, in my experience, Yaimiko's skill on her own just isn't enough to refund her burst efficiently, so instead you're probably going to find yourself pairing her up with Fischl or Raiden, and luckily Fischl is on her banner, and Raiden Shogun is going to be the next raid up banner, so I highly recommend using at least one of these two units with her if possible. However, A is probably the better choice since she can refund her burst a lot quicker. Other characters that work well with the Aimiko that really stood out to me were Kazuha, Bennett, and Kujosara. When you pair these units all together, you get such a huge damage buff that you're really able to burst down your enemy. The only real issue is making sure that you have enough energy in order to cycle through your characters again, but if you're trying to one-shot bosses, this is probably your best team. Another interesting thing that I found out about Yaimiko is that she's actually very good in a mono-electro team comp consisting of herself, Kujo Sara, and either Raiden or Fischl. And for the fourth spot, you should be slotting in a character like Kokumi or Jean. Kokumi provides healing and hydro application for an electro charge team, and Jean offers healing as well as electro shred. So honestly, I really don't think that you can go wrong with either. And I'm sure that there are some other team comps that work as well, but these are just a few that I've tested out. In fact, I did bring Yaimiko into Spiral Abyss, with a team consisting of her, Kazuha, Kokumi, and Raiden. And while I know that this definitely isn't a free-to-play friendly team, I just really want to get a sense for her gameplay style and how she actually functioned in Spiral Abyss. And honestly, I was pretty surprised. Even though her talent levels were only level 6, she was outputting a lot of damage thanks to her other teammates. And while my rotations are a little bit awkward since I don't have enough energy recharge on my Yaimiko, I was still able to get through all three chambers fairly easily. And so that brings us to the final part of the video, is Yaimiko good? Honestly, I would have to say that I have mixed feelings on this. Yaimiko is definitely one of my favorite characters and I definitely love her gameplay style but I can't help but feel as though her kit is a bit clunky if you don't have everything you need to make it work. For example, if you don't have Fischl or Raiden, I feel as though energy recharge is a huge problem if you want to get her burst up consistently, and as I mentioned previously in the video, her normal and charge attacks are very clunky, and so 9 times out of 10, even though I had them leveled up to talent level 6, I usually ended up avoiding using them. Another really important thing to mention is the fact that Yaimiko is… how do I say this? Yaimiko is a very good electro sub DPS unit, and honestly besides the Raiden Shogun at C2 she might be the best, but the simple fact of the matter is that we already have multiple electro sub DPS units. We have Raiden, we have Fischl, we have Beto, we have Lisa, we have Kujo Sara, so did we really need another electro sub DPS unit? And the even better question is, do you need another electro sub DPS unit? Cause honestly I think that's the biggest question. If you already have characters like Fischl and Beto, 
especially if you have constellations on them, do you actually need Yaimiko in terms of functionality? In my opinion, the answer is no. When we're strictly looking at whether or not you need Yaimiko, the honest answer is that we have other characters that can do her same job. The only thing is that Yaimiko probably does output more damage than them, unless like I said you have Fischl or Beto with multiple constellations. So I think what it really comes down to is whether or not you like Yaimiko, whether or not you like her gameplay, and whether or not you're interested in using her instead of some of these other units. In my personal opinion, Yaimiko is feeling more like a luxury character than a necessity, and honestly, there's nothing wrong with that, because all that means is that if you do summon her, she is very good and she's definitely going to boost your account, but if you don't summon her, I don't think that you're going to get the same amount of regret that you would if you skip someone like Kazuha or Raiden Shogun. However, keep in mind that my talent levels were only level 6, meaning that the damage that I show in this video isn't indicative of the total damage that she can actually put out. I still have room to level up her talents 4 more times, and with those additional talent levels, I'm sure that she's going to be hitting a lot harder. It's also important to keep in mind that her constellations do make her a lot better of a character, because not only does C1 essentially solve all of her energy problems, but C2 and beyond essentially double her damage. And while it's good that her constellations do give her more value, it does suck if you can't actually manage to pull for them. This time around, I'm probably only going to go to C1 or C2, mainly because I think those are the constellations that provide her the most value, at least without breaking the bank. But keep in mind, that when you do see players using a C6 Yaimiko, that the amount of overall damage that they're dealing compared to a C0 is going to be wildly different. But this really isn't any different from any other character in Genshin Impact. So final verdict, Yaimiko's good. If you want her, you should go ahead and get her. Just know that you have other options in terms of Electro Sub DPS units, so I personally don't think that you need to feel pressured into summoning for her if you don't want her. And like many other Raid Up 5 stars, unfortunately a huge amount of her potential is locked behind constellations, so I don't think she's quite as free to play friendly as some other options. But these are just my opinions after playtesting her, I am excited to build her further and to level up her talent levels once I fight the weekly boss, so maybe with time she'll grow on me even more. However, if you're still having questions on whether or not you want to summon for Yai Miko or Raiden Shogun, I did make an entire Is Raiden Shogun Worth It video, which I'll make sure to link both above and down below. And if you did end up enjoying the video, please feel free to leave me a like and comment down below, it really does help me out and I greatly appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button button and click that notification bell. But that's all for now, so until next time, best wishes, bye.